Uh, thank you so much in the action of prayer. I think let us continue in the same spirit as we commit this moment of sharing in the hands of the Lord. Father Almighty, we continue to praise and extol your holy name, Lord, for who you are. What would our, our lives be like, Lord, without you? You are the one that gives meaning to our lives, oh God. We exist because of you. We do all that we do because of you, Lord. Thank you for your grace upon our lives that sees us, Lord, rising up every single day that passes by and walking through it, oh God. We are so grateful. We continue to humble ourselves as we yield our hearts unto you. The Bible tells us that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. And this evening, Lord, we desire that our souls, our spirits be brightened up, oh God, by your word as we share together. And so I pray that may you use me as a vessel to convey your word to us all. And help us to understand, for in Jesus' mighty name, I do pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Friends, I thank God for each and every one of us who is on call. And thank you for your commitment in seeking the face of the Lord. It is never in vain. But this evening, the topic that... I was given to share on says in him is life. Our topic this evening is in him is life. And it is coming to us from the gospel according to St. John chapter 1 verse 4. But allow me to read the first uh, five verses of John chapter 1. John chapter 1 from verse 1, and I'm reading from the New King James. This is what the word of the Lord says. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. The word of the Lord. As I said, our topic is, in him is life. And friends, as we share on this topic this evening, I have two phrases that I have uh, picked from this topic that I want us to uh spend the next few minutes sharing about. And the first phrase is, in him. In him is the first phrase. The second phrase is, is life. And so as we begin with the first phrase, in him, I want to pose a question to us, that who is this him that John is talking about? that he is saying that life is in him. He says in him is life. And who is this him? The gospel according to St. John, as we have read in the verses we read, begins by tackling the deity or the divine nature of Christ Jesus. So critical to the Christian faith, friends, is the understanding of the deity or the divine nature of Christ. From the inception of the church, the church has always had to deal with people who profess Christianity but distort the deity of Christ. Many people, you know, mm -hmm. even today, have a distorted view of who Christ is. Some people used to, you know, in, in the beginning of the church, the early church days, used to say that Christ is, yes, a supernatural being, but he 
is not actually God. And others, even when they acknowledge him, still certain things concerning the personality of Christ, they do not want to agree with. Issues surrounding you know, him as God becoming flesh, it is something that beats the understanding of many, even to date. That is why the Holy Church had to come up with the creeds that we know in our church today, the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, to guide believers on the basics of their faith. And so to John, it was very, very important for his audience to understand the deity of Christ. If their relationship, their faith in Christ Jesus was to be of any uh, significance in their lives. And so it begins by saying, in the beginning was the word. John uses the word to refer to Christ. And he says, in the beginning was the word. I do not want to go into the details of uh, sharing what the word uh, actually means uh, from the Greek point of view and you know the Hebrew point of view at that particular time. But let us just take it that the word being used here is referring to Christ Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior. And so he highlights the word. And what does this imply for him? before the beginning? He existed before time began. He existed before creation. He is therefore not limited by time at all. He is from everlasting to everlasting. Whatever is created, including you and I, we are bound by time. We are but for a moment. We are like vapor that fades off with time. And so we shouldn't be blinded by good times to make us feel like we are forever. Only God is from everlasting to everlasting. He exists beyond time. He is not limited by time. But everything that is created is actually time bound. Also, because Christ existed before creation, he is not a created being. He is self-existent. Friends, creation is not self-existent. We owe as creation our existence to our creator, who is the Lord God Almighty. And so we need to understand that because Christ existed before time began, he is a God who is not limited by time. He is not part of creation. He is not created. But everything that existed from the time of creation, all of them are created beings. And so we owe our lives to the creator. He is the source of our lives. Secondly, John says that the word was with God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. What does this mean, friends? You know, saying that the word was with God sets him as a distinct person from the Father. We know that we have the Trinity. The Trinity consists of three persons, but it's one God. Saying that he was with the Father John is actually saying that Christ is distinct from the Father. He is a separate person within the Trinity. And so he has an intimate relationship with the Father belonging to the Trinity. He is part of the Trinity. He has been there with the Father. He, you know, they, they exist together as one God, they are 
intimate. Much as they are different persons of the Trinity, they are actually one in being. They are one in attribute. Whatever attribute that is true of the Father is actually true of the Son as well because they are one in being but different persons of the Trinity. And because they are one, that means that there is a level of intimacy between Christ Jesus, who is the Son, and the Almighty Father. So this is Christ Jesus, who is not different from the Father, who does not have different attributes from the Father. He does not have different a different nature from the Father, but he has the same nature because they could not coexist. They could not exist together as one God if they were different in their nature. And so John is agreeing to the fact that the Son, who is Christ Jesus, existed with the Father, and they are one with the Father. They possess the same qualities. They possess the same attributes. They possess the same divine nature. We cannot therefore say that we believe in the Father and we deny the Son and we deny Christ Jesus. We cannot say that we accept Christ Jesus, but again, we fail to agree with the Father. These are one being. When we put our faith in Christ Jesus, we have believed in the Father as well because they are one. And he continues to say that the word was God. The word was God. Friends, being with God, as we said earlier, does not make him like God. But John adds that he is actually God. He was there in the beginning. He was with God, but he is God as well. So he's not just like God, but he is God. He possesses every attribute that the Father possesses, just as we have said. And being God, he is sovereign over all creation. We cannot compare him to creation. He is eternal. He never dies. Friends, God never dies. But everything that is created has a time limit. It reaches a particular point in time and it fades off. Whether it is a human being, whether it is a plant, whatever it is that is created has got a time limit. But Christ Jesus being God is eternal. He is not limited by time in any way. This is therefore the him that we are talking about, the him who existed before creation, the him who existed as an agent of creation because John says all things were made through him and without him, nothing was made that was made. He was an agent of creation. The him, you know, that sustains creation is not only an agent of creation, but he also sustains creation. And so when he says that in him is life, he is not referring just to any being, but he is uh, referring to Christ Jesus and he is acknowledging the deity of Christ that even if he came in flesh and blood, it does not make him a human being like any of us, but he still remains God with all the divine nature that he had before coming to the earth. And so Christ Jesus is both, you know, he came as fully human but he was a hundred percent God as well. So this is the hymn that he is addressing to us today and saying in him, we have life. Now, let us uh, go to the second portion, which says is life. It says in him was life. And we are saying this evening, in him is life. What is life? this life. There are several definitions of life, but I came across one that interested me. It says, it is the state of being which begins with generation, birth, 
all germination and ends with death. And also the time during which this state continues. I repeat, the state of being which begins with generation, birth or germination and ends with death. Also the time during which this state continues. There are very many definitions of life. When you go to biological definitions, you'll get a variety. And all these other you know, uh, dictionaries, you will still derive very many definitions of life. But let me ask again, is this the kind of life that John is talking about here, that in Christ Jesus, we have life? Is it the kind of life he is talking about? A life that begins, you know, of, at birth and ends with death. Is this the kind of life that he is talking about? Obviously not. Much as it may consist of this life that we have here on earth, but the major focus of John is the life that never fades, the life that is eternal, the kind of life that Christ himself has, the life that existed before creation, the life that stretches beyond creation, the life that stretches to eternity. Friends, this kind of life that, you know, uh, is talked about in this definition that we have had and that we may derive from science, you know, from uh, the dictionary, they are but for a moment. Unfortunately, we tend to focus so much attention on it. Many times, we do things to better our lives here on earth. The kind of work we are doing is to make our lives better under the sun, which is not a bad thing. But friends, we make a lot of investment in this earthly life to make our existence on earth enjoyable and to look good before others. However, biblically, Regardless of the efforts that we put in this life, we are still considered dead. First John chapter 5 and verse 12 tells us something concerning life. First John chapter 5 and verse 12. Listen to what it says. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Does it mean that even when I am breathing, when I am struggling so much to make my life better here under the sun, if I do not have Christ in me, I am actually lifeless. I am a dead being. I am a moving corpse. Does it mean that all the efforts that I put to make this life you know, better, is all in vain. The Bible says that without the sun, there is no life. Life is only in the sun. And so I want to draw our attention to the life that John was talking about, that in him we have life. What is this life, friends? It is life from a spiritual point of view that comes through a relationship with Christ Jesus, the life that Christ himself is having, the life that existed before time began. This life we draw from Christ himself and it does not fade. A life that is not limited by time, a life that is eternal. This eternal life is our light. In the gospel of John that we, we read, it, it tells us in verse 4 that in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And so this kind of life that we are talking about is actually our light in this dark world. When we have this life, it teaches us how to invest in this earthly life without ignoring the aspect of eternity. Friends, 
the writer of the book of Acts records in Acts 17, 28, Acts 17, 28, that in him we live, we move, and have our being. And therefore, even as we exist here under the sun, there is a life that we are supposed to be focusing on more. There is a life that we are supposed to be investing in more. Yes, this breath that we have under the sun is good. The life that we have, that we, you know, we received from our parents being born into this world is okay. But Christ is drawing our attention to a life that goes beyond life in this world. And that is why in Acts 17, 28, it says that we live in him, we move in him, and in him we have our being. Friends, a life without Christ is a life that knows no peace because it is separated from its maker and because there is no light in it. It knows no peace. It is a life that is covered by darkness. It is a life that does not know where actually it is going to. It is a life that does not have hope at all. It is a life that is, you know, having a lot of heartbreaks, a life that is filled with disappointments, a life that is filled with frustrations, a life that is considered dead. This life is not what Christ desires for you and I. We who know the Lord, we who say that we are the children of the Most High, we are supposed to be generating life from Christ Jesus. When we are connected to Christ Jesus, we have this gift of life that comes from him, a life that we did not receive from our earthly parents, but comes through our relationship with Christ Jesus. And this life that Christ gives his children, it is a life that death has no victory over. It is a life of peace. It is a life of joy. It is a life of victory. It is an abundant life. In John 10, 10, he says that he has come that we may have life and life in, his, in its fullness. Now, if Christ says that I have come that they may have life and life in its fullness, life in its abundance, does it mean that before his coming, we did not actually have life? It is just, it just points to what we read earlier on in 1 John 5, 12, that without the sun, there is no life. And so if we are living in this life and we are happy and thinking that all is well, yet we do not have the son of God, we actually do not have life in us. Christ Jesus came that you and I may have life and not only have this life, but life in its fullness. That is the desire desire of God for you and I. That is the desire of God for every human being, that when we put our hope and trust in him, what we think that is life at the moment, we shall actually acknowledge that it is not life, but true life. It comes through a relationship with Christ Jesus. And we, when we partake of this life that comes through our relationship with Christ Jesus, then we can walk in this earthly life with confidence. That is why in Acts 17, 28, it says in him we live. We know that our livelihood here under the sun does not depend on any circumstances around us, but our lives depend on him who is the source of life. Because we are generating life directly from him, this life cannot be stopped by the circumstances of life. This life cannot be distorted by anything that is earthly. This life is a superior life. This life is a victorious life that conquers every situation. It is a life that thrives amidst the oddest circumstances. This is the life that comes through faith in Christ Jesus. And that is why John says, in him we have life. And without the Son, 
there is no light. You might want to reflect on the years that you probably could have spent without a relationship with Christ. And if you are to compare that life to the life that you have today in Christ Jesus, is there, you know, a tangible change that you can recognize as far as your life here under the sun is concerned? You see, friends, when we have life, this life that comes through a relationship with Christ, we discover our identity in Christ Jesus. Many people have failed to recognize their true identities. They are living on fake identities because they do not have the life of Christ in them. And that is why some try even to copy other people's lives. If they see that theirs is not good to them, they want to live like others, thinking that if they copy other people's lives, maybe they will have a better life here under the sun. Let me tell us, friends, however much we try the different options to make life pleasant here under the sun, but without the Son of God, we shall never, you know, get to understand the true meaning of life. We shall never get to enjoy this life. But it is only in Christ Jesus when where we discover our true identity and we are able to live confidently in this life without any fear because we know who we are, we know whose we are, we know where we are actually going. That even when we face injustices, our response in this life is not like those who are losers. We know that the injustices that we face in this life cannot take away the life that we have in Christ Jesus. This life cannot be manipulated by anything. This life cannot be taken by anybody because it is in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. And so I want to encourage us as children of the Most High God, it is good to work for a living. It is good to invest in this earthly life. But as we invest in this earthly life, may the light, which is from the life that we have in Christ, guide our steps in what kind of investments that we have to make concerning these lives, that we do not miss out on the issues of eternity. Because at the end of it all, you and I are to reign with Christ eternally. When we believe in him, then there is a deposit of this life that is given to everyone who believes in him. Even as we are still living under the sun, we have the eternal life in us. So whatever we do, it is from the understanding of eternity. We do not just do things for for the moment, you know, momentary enjoyments, but our focus is looking to life beyond this earthly life. And this hope is only in those who have yielded their lives to Christ Jesus. If we do not have him, we do not have this life. We continue to struggle with this other earthly life which is separated from him, but we shall never realize peace in our lives. We shall never realize fulfillment. We shall never realize satisfaction. Friends, satisfaction is only in Christ Jesus. Fulfillment in life is only in Christ Jesus because when we have him, we have abundant life. The life that comes with every package that we need for now and even for the life to come in his eternal glory. Paul tells the Colossians in Colossians 3.3 3, that they died and their lives were hidden with Christ in God. He told them that you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So are we today. We will put our hope and trust in Christ Jesus. Our lives are hidden with Christ in God. It is hidden from fear, hidden from frustrations, hidden from death. When we are in Christ Jesus, our lives are secure friends. 
It is hidden from what the enemy can do. It is hidden from what the world can do that can hinder us from enjoying this life. That is why you find that even if the child of God is going through pain, but he's still able to rejoice amid this that pain because the life that he or she has is not the life that has been given by the world that is determined by circumstances, that is determined by happenings. When things are okay, you rejoice, you are happy. But when things are not okay, the joy, the peace is taken away. But this life that comes through faith in Christ Jesus, even when things are terrible, you still hold on. You still move with your head lifted up. You still rejoice. You still celebrate the goodness of the Lord because you know that that pain, is it has nothing to do with your eternity. It has nothing to do with the plan and the purpose of God for your life. It cannot stop anything that God has in store for you. And so, amid these challenges, you are able to rejoice. You are able to laugh. And people don't just understand. When they look at you and expect you to be crying, to be, you know, in grief, in sorrows, and you are all smiling, you are rejoicing, they fail to understand. But the secret is in Christ Jesus, because this life that you have in Christ Jesus neutralizes the pain that you could have experienced without Christ in your life. And so Paul says that our lives are hidden with Christ Jesus in God. When you are in Christ, when you have the sun reigning in your life, your life is hidden with him in God. Hallelujah. That is the beauty of salvation. That is the beauty of having a relationship with Christ. And because your life is hidden with Christ in God, you know, you know it is not determined or controlled by circumstances, just as we have been saying, but your life depends on God and God alone. He is the source of your life. He is the one who sustains your life. That is why in, in Acts 17, 28, it was saying that in him we live, we move and have our being. And so men can change goal post in this life, concerning your life. Men can do many things to fail you, but provided you are moving, you know, based on this life that you have generated from Christ Jesus himself, no scheme of man can ever fail what God has planned for you as his child. They will try as much as possible, but they will not handle because this life that comes through faith in Christ is a life that is not stoppable. Death, if death cannot stop it, friends, then what other thing can stop this life? Hallelujah. But it doesn't mean that we shall not experience challenges. We shall experience them, but those challenges <coughs> cannot stop what God has in store for us. It is a life that is not controlled by circumstances, but it is totally dependent on God and acknowledges God as the source, acknowledges God as the one who sustains it, acknowledges God as sovereign over it and yields to God for guidance in everything that it does. Hallelujah. And so, I want to encourage us, friends, this evening, as, Paul, uh, as John wrote this gospel and recorded that in him we have life. And this life is the light of man. And yet in 1 John 5 and verse 12, he says that without him, without the Son, there is no life. I want us to draw our attention to the life that is beyond this physical life. I want us to put our focus to this life that comes through our faith in Christ Jesus. As we invest in these other things to make our earthly lives pleasant, let us not, for, let us not forget about our spiritual lives. Let us not forget about the life that we have acquired through our relationship with Christ Jesus. May we even invest more in that 
that life, that when that life is strengthened, when that life is well, you know, nourished, when it is, it is well catered for, it is going to thrive in this physical life. Actually, that life will govern the physical life that we have and will enable us to enjoy the abundance that Christ has in store for all who believe and put their hope and trust in him. And so as I conclude, I want to re-echo this, friends, that for as long as we remain connected to Christ, we are assured of abundant life here on earth, life of peace, a life of joy, a life of victory, a life that overcomes every circumstance, a life that is superior to this earthly life a life that cannot be hindered by any earthly power, a life that is secured in Christ Jesus. And God says that whosoever touches you actually touches the apple of his eyes. That is how, how dear you are to God who is the source of this life, a life that is protected by God himself, a life that is sustained by God. For as long as we remained, we, we remain connected to Christ Jesus, we are assured of this abundant life. But also, we are assured of eternity. Because when we believe in Christ, when we acknowledge him as our Lord and Savior, we are given that eternal life from the moment we believe. And so even as we live here under the sun, we know that we are citizens of heaven. We are not afraid of death. They kill the body, but they cannot do anything to the soul. With this confidence, with this hope, with this, you know, boldness, because we know who we are and whose we are. We know where we are headed to. We know that this life is a life that will not just end here, but it will live forever and ever provided we remain connected to Christ Jesus. And so in him, friends, we have life. Without him, there is no life. May the good Lord bless us. Shall we pray? Father Almighty, we give you glory, praise, and honor. We are so grateful, Lord, for the life, the new birth that you have given us, O oh God, through Christ Jesus. I know that sometimes because of what we go through in this earthly life. We tend to focus much attention, Lord, on this earthly life for God. And we forget about the eternal, eternal element of our lives, Abba Father. But as we have, Lord, heard from you this evening, that when we do not have the Son, we do not have life for God. May you help us, O oh God, to work on our relationship with Christ our Father. May we build it more and more, that the life of Christ, O oh God, may saturate us, O oh God, may fill us, Master King of Glory, and be reflected in everything that we do in this earthly life, that when people see us, they will see you, O oh Lord God Almighty, and acknowledge that indeed, we are the children of the Most High God. So help us, O oh God, where we are weak, we pray that may your strength be perfected in our weaknesses, O oh Lord, that we may not lose out in this life that you give to all who believe and trust in you. Thank you, Abba Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we do pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Reverend Walter, for the word. Um, I want all of us to, re to reflect on the word uh, that Reverend Walter has just preached. And the word says, in him, there is life. Um, I want us to reflect and pray and pray over the word and pray over it and say we partake of Jesus in our lives because he himself is life. Father in heaven, we want to pray, O oh God, Father, that may you reveal to us, O oh God, the secrets in you, O oh God, Father. May you reveal to us the secrets of life in Christ, O oh God, 
Father, we pray that may this word come to pass, O oh good Father, that the children will come to understand you, that the elderly will come to understand you, O oh God, that you alone, O oh Master, is life, O oh God, Father. In you alone is internal life, O oh God, Father. For the Bible tells us, O oh God, Father, that whoever does not have you does not have life. That means he cannot breathe, he cannot walk, he cannot grow, O oh God, Father. But they are just there, O oh God, Father. But because of your mercies, O oh Lord, you are able to sustain us as your children, O oh God. But I pray, O oh God, that may this word, O oh God, get a fertile ground to dwell in. May it get our soft hearts, O oh God, Father, that we shall recognize, O oh Lord, that it's only in you, O oh Master, that there is life and life in abundance, O oh God, Father. That it's only in you that we have our hope in. It's only in you, O oh Lord, that we have that you have set better plans for us, oh God, Father. Plans to give us a long life on earth and plans to give us internal life, oh Master. Father, we pray that may this word find a rest in our hearts, oh God, Father, that we shall do things that will glorify your name, that will give us life and life in its fullness, oh God, Father. We acknowledge you, oh Lord, Father, has, the, has everlasting to everlasting, oh God, Father. We acknowledge you, oh Father, that you alone were there before the creation started, and you are there until now, oh Lord, Father. May you find perfect direction in our hearts, oh God, Father. May you guide our footsteps to that life, oh God, Father, to that life that you died on the cross that everyone enjoys it, oh God, Father. May you direct us, oh Lord, Father, to that life that we shall live to its fullness, oh God, Father. May you sustain our lives because you alone is the sustainer of life. There is no any other that can sustain life, oh God, Father. The breath that you breathe is in your hands, oh God, Father. Oh, the light that you are able to see and walk on the earth, oh God, Father, it's all within your, your measure and your control, Lord, Father. For the Bible tells us, oh God, Father, when the children of Israel are crossing from uh, Egypt to Canaan, oh Lord, Father, you brought dark into the soldiers of Egypt, oh God, Father, and they all died. What a bad thing, oh God, to be in darkness, oh God, Father, for you don't know where you're going, for you don't know who's leading you. Oh, Father, we thank you because you are the life, oh God, Father, and you are the light, oh God, Father, who leads us into the right path, oh God, Father. Help us, oh God, to understand you more. Help us, oh God, to enjoy this life in its fullness, oh God, Father. Oh, God, I pray for the salvation, oh God, Father, for the salvation, oh God, Father. For there is no way we can enjoy this life in its fullness if we have not confessed your word, oh God, Father. That this word in this mission time will reach out to the ends of the earth. That people will know that you alone is life, oh God, Father. That you alone is light, oh Lord, Father. In our lives, in our families, oh God, Father. We shall seek you first, oh God, Father. Because if we plan, oh Lord, Father, and plan, all our plans will be in vain, oh God, Father. If we do not put you first, oh God, Father. If we do not put you as a priority, oh God, Father. Help us to consider you as a priority, oh Lord, Father. In our daily lives, oh God, Father. In our works, oh God, Father. In our places of work, oh Lord, Father. Help us, oh Master. Help us, oh God, to understand your word in depth, oh God, Father. That you alone is life, oh God, Father. And in you, oh Lord, Father, there is life, oh God, Father. We pray, oh God, Father, for our relationship with you, oh God, Father. For our identity with you, oh Lord, Father. As children of the Most High, oh God, Father. We pray for our identity with you, oh God, Father. For our perfect relationship with you, oh Lord, Father. That we shall not conform to the patterns of this world, oh God, Father, that we shall not place our legs in light and in darkness, oh God, Father, but we shall only be in light, oh God, Father, and seek you, oh God, Father, as the giver, as the sustainer, and as life himself, oh God, Father. You are everything, oh God, in our lives, oh God, Father. Help our, our families, help our 
brethren, help our nation, oh God, Father. Understand this life that we are talking about, oh Lord, Father. In you, oh Lord, Father, we believe that you created us for a purpose, the purpose of God to shine outside there, to breathe life to others there, to take your word to the ends of the earth, oh Lord, Father. Help us, oh God, Father, to be the vessels in this season, in this time. Help us, oh God, Father, to be the carriers of your word, oh God, Father, to speak life to whoever is outside there, God, Father, to understand that you shed your blood on the cross so that we may live Oh God, Father, that you shed your, your blood on the cross and we were forgiven, oh God, Father. That you shed your blood on the cross, oh God, Father, so that we can partake of you, oh Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus. In a special way, Lord, Father, I want to pray for the servant of the Lord who has delivered this message this evening, oh God, Father. That may you rejuvenate him, oh God, Father. May you, oh Father, sustain him. Breathe more life in him, O oh God, Father, so that he may be able to speak life to the rest of the nations, O oh God, Father. May you, O oh Lord, Father, take control over his life, O oh God, Father. And whoever was logged in, O oh Lord, Father, may you bless them, O oh God, Father. Lord, may you direct them, O oh God, Father. May you breathe your life that they have just talked into their lives, O oh God, Father. And may they... Take your word to the ends of the earth, oh God, Father. We want to thank you, Lord, this evening that you've made it for us, oh God, Father, to come and eat of your bread, to come and eat of your word, which is life, oh Lord, Father. What a wonderful season it is, oh God, Father, for your children to share. What a wonderful time, oh God, Father, for the, for the secret of life to be revealed to your children, oh God, Father. This is the total ultimate secret of living in the earth, oh God, Father understanding, Lord, that you're the life that we ought to live, oh God, Father. Understanding that you're the, you are the bread that we ought to breathe, oh God, Father. Understanding that we are nothing without you, oh God, Father. Understanding that we are we can easily perish without you, God Father. You you showed you struck it once. You didn't, you struck it twice, oh God Father. In the times when we had COVID, oh God Father, you all, you alone saved us, oh God Father. And that is why we continue to speak of your goodness. That's why we continue to take the message of life to the ends of the earth. And that is why, oh Lord Father, we come with a humble heart, oh God Father. Thanking you, O oh Lord, Father, for the each and every opportunity that you've given us to live now and internally, O oh God, Father. We bless your name. We worship you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen.